coming up next on this episode of the Unlock You podcast. Our teens' brains, and mine as well, are asking two basic core questions subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And if I know that, and if I keep answering those questions 10 times a day or 20 times a day, it gets better. And the two questions are, am I worthy of your love? Am I worthy of anybody's love? Mm -hmm. Am I lovable? And I need to see it. I need to hear it. I'll push back. I'll push boundaries. I'll test it. And particularly when, when I break up with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or I get rejected, or don't get likes on whatever, I need to know somewhere somebody loves me. And the second one is, can I count on you? Is there anybody out there that has my back when I fall, when I fail, when I look bad, when, when people laugh at me? If parents can be that person for their kid more than they're doing now, it will make a difference. And the kids, they'll be happier. They'll be more secure. They'll be bolder. They'll test out boundaries more. Welcome to Unlock You with Dr. Shannon Crawford. And today, my amazing guest is Bill <laughs> Senyard. And we are excited because he is going to help unlock our parenting, help us get secure attachment to bring out the best in our kids. And he's got some love tips for the romantic side. So we'll break them into two episodes. <laughs> First, we're going to start with how do we develop good enough parenting, take the pressure and the stress and the albatross off of our shoulders of trying to be good enough and really abide in that sweet spot of cultivating and bringing out the best in those that we love in their mm. formative years. So thank you for being our guest, Bill. It's so good to be here. Uh, I love your stuff. I just listened to your parenting podcast and I recommend it. And I'm going to recommend it to all of my, my listeners. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I'm honored. Okay, so we need to know who this amazing man is. Bill is the president of Gospel App Ministries. He has been a pastor for over 25 years, the author of over 15 books, dang, a popular conference speaker and the host of the Gospel Rant podcast. His passion is helping beat up and frustrated Christians hear the music again. To that end, the Gospel app has created three online proactive or participant programs, <laughs> the Forgiveness, Forgiving Path is a two hour journey to help Christians actually forgive that deeply enriches hurt and wound, which we'll need to explore. That's so needed. And over a thousand people have gone through this path. Participants self-report a 20% reduction in their desire for revenge. I think after 2020, all of us need a little bit of that. Oh my goodness. Totally. <laughs> and then you have the dance designed to help people deal with shame and depression, which again, so vital. It takes about two hours, and most recently, they created Good Enough Parenting for frustrated parents of teens, tweens, who want to be good enough parents. It's immersed in the gospel, but utilizes the latest research in neuroscience and attachment theory. I can geek out on that. Mm -hmm. Good Enough Parent is free for all who want to participate. Once registered, they'll send a 10-minute parent tip every day for 15 days. So I love how many resources you have. Just such a <laughs> plethora to invest in people. So I had to have you as a guest. Um, and what was the journey for you of trying to help people take that pressure, the performance of parenting off and really find that sweet spot in parenting? It was parenting that caused it. Um, <laughs> yeah, your own, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I was, I realized now, and my kids laugh at it now. We all do. Uh, and they're adults now uh, in their, in their thirties, but you know, I, I, I'm shame prone at, uh, from attachment theory point. I'm avoidant. And uh, so in many ways, I was leveraging the relationship with my kids and trying to protect my own, try to try to look like a good father and a good pastor and, and, yeah. and those sort of things. Can I tell you one quick story? And I have Please. my son's permission. He went on a, uh, a, a study trip abroad down into uh, South America. We loved it. He learned Spanish. He's, he's, he's a, such a class act as a kid. This was his senior year. And we were called about three months into it saying, come pick up your kid. He, we are rejecting him. He is the first person who has ever been rejected from this program. <laughs> and we had no idea what was going on. So we flew down there. We were taken from the airport to this boardroom where 12 people, including his host parents, were there, and they just started spewing invectives about our kid, uh, how he was partying, he wasn't being responsive, he was being 
it just wasn't the kid we knew. And about 10 minutes in, and they just went down the line telling how bad our kids were. And and I, so I had to stop the meeting. I've been in business for 15 years, so I know how to stop meetings. I said, <laughs> I got to go talk to my son. So we walked out the back door. We walked along this stream and I was going to ream him out. And here's why. Looking back, he made me look bad. Mm-hmm. He made me feel like a bad father. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was taking it. And I'm a pastor, you know. It's like uh, the you know the 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 image of Christ and all of that good stuff. And I just wanted to tell him and tell him what a bad, bad kid he was. But but I was grabbed by the Holy Spirit, and what came out of my mouth was the, some of the things you said in your podcast. I looked at him and said, "Son, I love you. I am your biggest fan. I would buy stock in you. I think I have. I would. I think you're going to change the world. We'll get through this. Nothing that happens when we go back to that meeting is going to affect me and you. Are we good? He starts crying. I start crying. We go back into that meeting and things turn around and he ends up staying. He ends up making amends. He ends up changing his ways and becoming a scholar and student and everybody loves mm-hmm. him. But all that aside, what the real change was me is like you said, I was, I was leveraging uh, my emotional, I was dis I was just going to dysregulate all over my son in order to yeah. feel better about myself. It had nothing to do with him. Exactly. And how many times we do that and oh. we don't realize, and we naturally oh. have positions of power and influence. And so there's yeah. not a lot of accountability for a parent to actually have to look in at our own motivation right. of why am I responding so sharply, quickly, reactively, rather yeah. than pausing and checking in with the Holy Spirit. Lord, what's the bigger thing you're breathing on and developing in my child right now? Yeah, and, and and we're not used to that. We're not like you said. We're not we're not used to. Uh, we're used to protecting ourselves, right? We have yeah. our own issues. We have our own attachment styles, and it's all subconscious. It's mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah, and and that's one of the things we're trying to do in Good Enough Parent is to make parents aware of what their attachment styles are, and to make parents aware of what their kids' at- attachment style yes. uh, is. We give them a a a, a short survey from Bartholomew and Horowitz on the four four different categories they could take it in in 10 minutes and find out and it's it's eye opening uh, and it helps us understand why we've been uh, uh, having struggles with our kids a little yeah and if we don't have language around it then it's like right square peg, round hole, mm. and we exert more control and power and influence, that's exacerbating the child who then either mm. acts out yeah. or acts in. And so an imploding child, a lot of the ones that yeah. don't have the behavior issues actually are mm. at more risk because a lot of the infrastructure of self-development is not happening. And so it's leading to codependence and other passive mm. or false Addictions. self-type relationships. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I love the quote from, and I put it in all of my stuff. It's by Bronfenbrenner, Yuri Bronfenbrenner, a uh, ch- well-known child psychologist. But he says this, every child, and, and the same thing with adolescents, and by the way, same thing for adults, every person needs at least one adult who is irrationally crazy about him or her. <laughs> Isn't that great? Say it again. It's so good. Every child, he says, needs at least one adult who is irrationally crazy about him or her. Mm, yeah yes and we need it every day yeah um when i wake up because i'm am shame prone i do not wake up feeling the love of god for me and you mm-hmm. know i'm a professional yeah uh i've come to recognize that so i ask god to make me uh, i use a quote in scripture i can share it with you and your listeners but i make me begin to feel that you're irrationally crazy about me today would be good and start now yeah. otherwise I'm going to use my wife. I'm going to use my kids. I'm going to use my listeners on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I just will. Yes. Um, that's what I do. Absolutely. And so we don't realize that we're actually kind of like using them as our little right. surrogate or our crutch. And right. so when they don't respond the way that our soul needs, now we feel unconscious entitlement to act out, to withdraw right. love. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So if we can somehow... And this is the good enough parent, and we're trying to give parents tips. If they can 
figure out in their context, every context is different. Mm -hmm. Every relationship is bruised up, uh, you know, uniquely. Yeah. And every parent has their own different style. But in their context, if they can figure out ways to every day communicate to their child, they're the biggest fan. Like, like you say, it's not about your performance. It's about who you are. And if I can communicate that yeah. and they can see it in my eyes, really good uh, adolescent attunement, yeah. uh, it will change our children they won't dysregulate as fast or as much it should be noticeable not perfect this isn't mm -hmm. heaven and and we should in the long run uh have less blow-ups our mm -hmm. kids would be a little more secure and so so would we frankly absolutely not perfectly right they would still need people like you when the things break up but mm -hmm. but but uh, things would get better. The way I tell uh, parents that I work with is the goal is for you and your child to be best friends by the time they're 30. Mm, I love that. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And so what are some practical things listeners can do to help cultivate that friendship while still having boundaries and not being yeah. indulging yeah. and the snowflake right. parenting? And consequences for bad performance, right? Mm -hmm. All of those things are true. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I love what you say. Again, I'm 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 really a big fan of your podcast. Oh, uh, you. So when bad things happen, we can go to our child and say, "Look, I love you, mm -hmm. but I also was hurt by what you just said." And and uh, we can talk about that. But I have to say, what you said hurt me or disrespected me, and and mm -hmm. I'm feeling that. But I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm your fan. I'll buy stock in you. And get to the point where I actually mean that and kids can spot, mm. you know, BS pretty quickly. But here's the big thing I think I found, and this is attachment theory. Um, our teens' brains and mine as well are asking two basic core questions subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And if I know that, and if I can keep answering those questions 10 times a day or 20 times a day, it gets better. And the two questions are, am I worthy of your love? Yeah. Am I worthy of anybody's love? Mm -hmm. Am I lovable? And I need to see it. I need to hear it. I'll push back. I'll push boundaries. I'll test it. And particularly when, when I break up with a boyfriend or a girlfriend or I get rejected or don't get likes on whatever, yeah. uh, I need to, yeah. I need to know somewhere somebody loves me. And the mm -hmm. second one is, can I count on you? Does, do you, is there anybody out there that has my back mm -hmm. when I fall, when I fail, when I look bad, when, when people laugh at me yeah. and, if parents can be that person for their kid more than they're doing now, mm. it will make a difference. And the kids, the kids will, they'll be happier. They'll be more secure. They'll be bolder. They'll test out boundaries more. Their um, risk taking will diminish a little bit because they won't need to as much. Yeah. Yeah, would would you agree? I mean, are we, we're on the same track here. Yes. I would use the just alliteration of saying it's favor and frame. So our children need to know that they are the favorite. Every single oh, person nice. needs to I know like that, that they are favored, that you have a special place in my heart that is irreplaceable. No one can take it. You have yeah. favor and you have a frame. That yeah. there's a consistency and a structure around you, which includes boundaries. So a lot of times with society, That's we good. see the pendulum go too far, where yes. we had kind of that military parenting, where it was all frame and structure yep. and very little favor. And then now we've come to this very indulging, entitled, I don't want anyone yeah. to have low self-esteem. And you're yep. actually doing the inverse. By yep. rescuing, fixing, never giving consequences, you're actually mm -hmm. unconsciously telling them you don't think they're capable, yeah. which does a deeper message of incompetence. Yep. Yep. Where again, based on temperament, they're either going to act out and right. try to prove that they are competent right? or they're going to believe that and take more of a passive posture in life. And then yeah. there's a lot of failure to thrive, not getting their Shame. driver's license, not yeah. uh, launching into relationships or career yeah. path because this sense that so I don't good. have what it takes because we went from yeah. the, you know, baby boomer parenting style to the eighties, yep. which was called yep. the me generation and this narcissistic yep. parenting where we're so fragile with shame, which is implied message. Again, I don't think you're yeah. capable. 
So when we create favor of, I relationally value you more than anyone else on the planet. And I love one of my clients uh, had a really very kind of military background parenting from their childhood and now learning to receive that he is God's favorite. And I believe all of us are God's favorite, right? So I tell myself, I am God's favorite. I am your delight. And there's a frame that I can't mess up. You know, I used to feel like there was this like very thin little line that I was walking, you know, this perfect will for God. And it was like this tightrope that I was constantly, you know, wary of falling off and messing up. And so the Lord had to show me like, there's a broad meadow. There's this very large frame where you get to play and explore and discover different parts of your personality. And I'm creating the structure around you to make sure you're safe. And there's Mm -hmm. natural cause and effect. There's consequence. There's consequences. You know, don't go too far right or left, but within Mm -hmm. this frame of relationship, there's equity, there's safety. And then you have a lot more of your intelligence, Mm -hmm. creativity, design. Mm-hmm. desires, passions come alive versus yep. when we're so anxious by That's a good. lack of boundaries That's that good. then we're trying to find them and pushing against. And it keeps us obsessed yeah. with relationship and neediness, mm-hmm. looking for peers, teachers, somebody to affirm me mm-hmm. versus a parent who creates really firm boundaries. That yep. consequence actually conveys safety that then I can yep. play and explore and use all these different parts. Like of an me. infant. Yep, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, we don't grow out of that much. A little bit, right? We do yeah. kind of figure out how to self-regulate. Most most adults, exactly. you know, uh, this is, it strikes me. I'm a biblical theologian, so it strikes me that that the church has gone through this. Not just any mm-hmm. church. I mean, uh, Christi- yeah. Christianity. Christianity. Yeah. We we swing from this this uh, militaristic God mm-hmm. that's demanding and laws and to this buddy 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 God. And neither one actually gives us the security that the that we're looking for, that exactly. we're longing for, they both fall short and, and they should, they should both be criti- criticized. There's a mm-hmm. verse that I run to it's in Zephaniah. It's badly translated by the way, in most, in most Bibles, but here it is. It's Zephaniah 317. The Lord, your God is with you. There it is. There it is. I'm, I'm with you. I, I am you. with you. It has uh-huh. nothing to do with perform. Matter of fact, Zephaniah is speaking to a very badly performing. Israel. <laughs> yeah. And he says, I'm, uh, the Lord is with you. He is mighty to save, meaning there's consequences. I'm going to rescue you. And here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the stuff. He takes great delight in you. Mm-hmm. He quiets you with his love. Yeah. He rejoices over you with singing. Isn't that what we're talking about? Yes. And the Holy Spirit, for another theologian, John Calvin, he said the secret working of the Holy Spirit within Christians is... Um, is to make us feel the favor of God, make Christians experience the favor of God every day. Mm. How about that? So beautiful. Yes. That's the uh, that's the thing that that so many Christians are longing for, and and like in relationships, we we fight for, we pray, we go on retreats, we read mm. books, we and we're going. This is not enough because I'm not feeling it. And, and what Paul talks about in Ephesians is he asked for. God's power through the Spirit in us, so that we could begin to grasp the height and width and length and depth. Even Paul of of the love of Christ. So Paul recognized, pretty sophisticated, that there's something wrong with the inner working models of my brain that Mm -hmm. I can't, much of the time, even though somebody's loving me, I can't feel it. I don't believe it, or I don't think I'm worthy, or I feel Mm -hmm. like I need to work a little harder. And it's the same thing with my relationship with with God. And that's that's what we do in the dance you mentioned is try to mm-hmm. remind Christians that they've been they're part of this this eternal trinitarian father son and spirit dance and they heard the music once mm. and life just beats the crap out of us and yep. when we stop hearing it. Yes, it's so true. And I think especially if a parent is listening to this one, Mm -hmm. we want no pressure, no stress. We actually Mm -hmm. want the inverse because the more that your soul steps in and tries to overcompensate going, oh, I don't want to be like my parents or such and such, your soul actually will do Mm -hmm. a terrible job as a parent. Because the soul is not meant to lead. It's not self-generating. And so it just operates based on old templates and you will reenact the very dynamics. Subconsciously. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when I make a vow, Mm -hmm. I've eliminated it from conscious awareness. And so it's bleeding out of me. And it happens all the time that I have clients that are like, oh, my parent did this X, Y, Z, but I'm a very good parent. My kids tell me blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, if you haven't worked on that, I have to be a little bit curious if you're just not getting feedback. By letting the soul lead, by striving, performing, trying to do such a good job or autopilot, assuming that your kids are just fine because they're not telling you otherwise, that is actually making you vulnerable to reenacting transmission of generational patterns. It just means those patterns go forward. But if on the other side, we picture unzipping the middle, Mm. which is your soul and inviting Mm. your fear, control, pride, Mm. all those templates of the soul Mm -hmm. to step back, stop Mm -hmm. striving and just allow love. It's like you're drawing your spirit man forward to lead and your Mm -hmm. spirit when connected to the Holy spirit. Now there's a rest. There's a Mm -hmm. peace that transcends all understanding, guarding your heart and mind. So you're not hooked Mm -hmm. into responding in the dynamic of your child. You're not reenacting those dynamics of what was Mm -hmm. modeled as a template of what you received. Instead, you're able to breathe in peace. Mm -hmm. You're able to have an internal conversation instead of a knee jerk reaction. And in that inner conversation, you're just Mm -hmm. saying, Holy Spirit, you love this child more than I do. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid if I lose control, I'll Mm -hmm. never get it back. And their life is going to be in prison, Mm -hmm. eating dog food. You know, I'm very anxious Mm -hmm. right now. And so Lord (laughs) comfort me Mm -hmm. so that I can be present and I can show what their soul is needing. So their soul calms down and then you remind them of their identity. And when you do, and you as a parent or authority figure, coach, pastor, whoever you are, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have some level of influence, even if you're an aunt or an uncle or an older friend, Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. speaking into their identity, you're picturing, you're literally drawing forth their spirit, man, their true self. And you say, Mm -hmm. Hey, the behavior I'm seeing right now is Mm -hmm. someone who is acting like they're insecure or anxious, Mm -hmm. the anger. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if there's something more vulnerable down there, Mm -hmm. but here's Mm -hmm. what I know to be true about you. And now you're operating out of the opposite dynamic. You're not getting hooked into treating them according to their current behavior. You're now stepping up into the spirit realm and you're now blessing them into their identity. And when you do, you're now teaching them to bring their spirit forward, to receive love, even in the midst of their own imperfection. But that's impossible to do in the moment if I haven't been diligently letting myself be loved in yeah. my worst moments, receiving it, breathing it in, unzipping mm-hmm. all that flesh, all the soul that clamors for mm-hmm. control and just surrendering into love. So if we're not putting that oxygen mask on our face first, mm-hmm. out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak and we're not mm-hmm. going to be able to have a template that's corrective and healing in that moment when we need yeah, it. That's good. That's and so good. that's what I love about your continued mm-hmm. education mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because now there's something that we're meditating on. We're drinking in and we're being imprinted by versus just head knowledge of what tool to apply in a moment. That's good. It's a drip, 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 isn't it? I mean, we're trying Mm -hmm. to reach the midbrain, which is, you know, uh, kind of in some ways out of the sphere of our prefrontal cortex. So it's not reasonable. uh, You know, and I think I'm being reasonable. And my kids give me feedback that I'm fine. I mean, there's a reason we call it blind spots, right? (laughs) Um, and, And yet, something's up and we and we know it yeah it might be better than with my parents but still uh, Mm -hmm. what what do you say to i mean social media is a big 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 counter influence today what do you say to your clients about the the realm of social media oh um It's hard, right? Because Mm -hmm. there's so much implicit messaging that goes Mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And when perfectionism, right? Oh, yeah. And there's just messaging across the board, societal, Mm -hmm. political, identity, Mm -hmm. gender Mm -hmm. rules, norms, all the things are getting implicit. So like, they did research, if I tell you about a political campaign, and Mm -hmm. I say, I am this person running for this, blah, blah, blah. And I tell Mm -hmm. you, your prefrontal cortex is queued up to think through what you're telling me. But if you do implicit messaging, like you kiss a baby, and you have an American Mm -hmm. flag on, or Mm -hmm. if you shake hands with this kind of person, and then we now go, oh, look, happy people at a bar. 
Mm -hmm. They're good looking, they're popular, they're mm -hmm. wealthy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. now I'm going to implicitly mm -hmm. without realizing it. That's what implicit yeah. means. Yeah. And so it creates a bias that just because I have an yeah. emotion connected to the messaging, yeah. I have not actually used critical thinking. It's bypassed yeah. all critical thinking into an yeah. emotional bias that the next time someone does try to bring logic and a parent says, hey, let's have a conversation around that. The child yeah. will react emotionally yeah, or the parent, true. anybody could right? This is all humans. Mm -hmm. It's not age dependent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And That's we right. get emotional and we defend it because it went in deeper than what my critical mm -hmm. reasoning. Yeah. And so now it no feels like, you don't, it. yeah, it feels like you don't understand me. You don't care. You don't yeah. get it. And so I'm naturally going to dismiss oh. and discredit anything yeah. that does not align with my emotions about that. Yeah. And that so, becomes real. Social media is really difficult because, um, I mean, the whole spectrum, right? Like we've seen families reconnect and have mm -hmm. cute photos of families and have mm -hmm. great conversations, but we've also mm -hmm. seen people get into, you know, rape and human trafficking, yeah. and grooming. We've seen all kinds of things in my yeah. own office. I've seen the whole spectrum of children being lured into false identities and relationships that are just not good for them. And so I do yeah. think it needs to be something that's open conversation um mm. and then open uh awareness of all the apps and especially yeah. not allowing the ones like snapchat that has the disappearing messages um and i know there's mm. a workaround for everything so because that's it, because it can be hidden is that is that the point with snapchat yeah, it disappears mm. unless you do a screenshot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh there's several apps i'm sure there's other ones as well mm. i learned most of it actually from my clients because i'm not on it. social media very much um but yeah, yeah i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. sex pictures those are just really yeah. common from middle school forward. I mean, some in elementary school. Yeah, actually. people are desperately looking for the favor. And am I worthy? Am I beautiful? Am yep. I in? And yep. uh, parents can really pull that string better than we've been doing. I mean, we should yes. lean into it. No shaming. I mean, no judgment. No parents. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. But But we could certainly be doing better. Yes. I do want to affirm parents that having your child not have access to any electronics at night, uh, yeah. not having oh. their phone in their room, not having computers, really? laptops, tablets, nothing in their room. At what age? Uh, any age. I don't, wow. I don't think that kids should have okay. electronics. I like it. I One, like EMFs. Um, two, mm -hmm. electromagnetic mm -hmm. frequencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two, the blue light. Three, there's all yep. kinds of conversations that happen at night for adults and children mm -hmm. and adolescents that don't mm -hmm. need to happen. Your brain is tired, and so it mm -hmm. weakens how much like you're actually that. using critical thinking. And so yep. again, you're kind of craving that dopamine yep. system is wanting attention, gratification. Maybe I'm lonely or having a bad dream or really uh, a trauma memory might be surfacing at night and I don't know what's happening. And so you're more likely to turn to those false comforters, a fake relationship mm. rather than bonding into real relationships. So I very mm. much support family dinner without electronics at all. Yep. Not having electronics um, by bedtime, right? Yep. So it would be ideal that maybe you allot, like here's your hour for the evening to do, you know, you're chatting with your mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. but it's in an open room in the house and it's not in your bedroom mm -hmm. by yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It feels yep. really terrible to the kid That's and they good. don't like it because my yep. friends don't make me do oh, that. Yeah. But I literally, in my office, real precious people, I've seen it time and yeah. time again. They don't need to have those conversations late at night. Um, right. And that's where a lot of the naked pictures and all the things are being sent. Yeah, no, that's really smart. Um, we're, we're, I'm working with one of the local school districts trying to get them to, to control uh, smartphones. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible. Uh, yeah. It's almost impossible. The, the genie's been let out of the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I do think there's a movement now to to new phones that are like the old ones. They aren't yeah. smart, and I think that's a that, that's yeah. interesting to me, for, particularly for younger age kids. Yes, they can call parents, but they can't access internet. Yes, which they can't even take pictures. It feels like you're the archaic, terrible parent. Right. But yeah, I've sat yeah. with people that are adults now going, I wish my parents uh, would have no. put boundaries and parameters around my life and not let That's me good. jump off the cliff. And here's that a place where parents can come alongside and go, yeah, I'm going to limit this. But look, I love you, babe. I'm investing in you. I'm a big fan. You're going to change the world. But you know what? This is going to be the rules here. And, yeah. and you know, we'll, let's talk when you're 30. <laughs> um, and reminding them of their choice. So mm. you can go behind my back. You are capable. There is enough technology mm. out there. Um, okay. And that's I'm a aware. choice. 
and I'm going to yeah. love you through it no matter what. Mm -hmm. But I love you enough to tell you in advance, your brain is telling you you can handle it. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to be a safeguard to let you know that keeping things open in relationship, mm -hmm. even if you think I won't like it, is mm -hmm. safer because there's yep. safety in a multitude of counselors rather than feeling like you need to hide and keep the secret life. That's yep. more dangerous in the long run. I will favor you and there will be a frame around you no matter what, but it's your yeah. choice. Like That's an example good. I've given some clients, if I'm in, you know, an embassy in the Middle East mm -hmm. and I have this ability to be protected by the United mm -hmm. States military, as long as I'm on the embassy. But mm -hmm. the moment with my free will, I choose to step yep. off of the embassy. Okay. There, yeah. an attack. there are good. just consequences of being in a it's world good. at war. <laughs> yeah. and you are not liked. And so yeah. being aware that you're going to make choices at some point where you're probably going to challenge this rule. Mm -hmm. I love you. No problem. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about mm -hmm. it. I would rather you share that and us have a conversation around it yeah. rather than feel like you've done it. And now you have to keep hidden and then yeah. go in headlong into a bunch of decisions that may yeah. be a lot more costly in the long run. So totally. I'm here as a guide, a coach, I'm a support system mm -hmm. because I'm helping you develop your autonomy. I'm helping you steward your individuality and learn mm -hmm. trial and error while you're still at home. I'm not going to be mm -hmm. controlling. And that's an issue with a lot of Christian parents is yep. over control while while they're uh, at home and then they send the kid away and they have no self-regulating. Yep. That and they're used to right people now. controlling them, peer pressure and telling them what to do. Yeah. And so now it's a free for all. So we want to titrate yeah. or slowly release that stewardship of authority to the child as they're growing up. Uh, yeah. As, and what, what I'm learning and it's in the good enough parent. We, we, we jokingly, one of the tips is, is, is about don't expect your child to be reasonable because their prefrontal cortex isn't, fully mature yes. but not online exactly. so they may think they're being reasonable they may sound reasonable they may use mm -hmm. logic but they're not being reasonable mm -hmm. and if parents expect to reason with their kids it's just gonna it's, 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 in some ways the kid's gonna take advantage of that just by nature mm -hmm. uh, so we parents have to be mm -hmm. somehow we have to be the reasonable ones in the room even though we have to make decisions that our kids aren't going to like Yes. Yeah. And so that would be the last thing I want to say is create a frame, know what you're like going to do ahead of time, even though Love your it. kid will try to push against it. The mm -hmm. more you stay to a loving frame, not a ridiculous one, um, mm -hmm. the more that they unconsciously believe yes means yes, mm -hmm. no means no. And that conveys safety. Mm -hmm. And although yeah. you know your frame, you still invite Socratic questioning. You still invite them to Good. be curious participate to themselves sure. yeah let's process i'm curious mm -hmm. not in a sarcastic way but i am curious mm -hmm. when you were chatting with them or when you sent this mm -hmm. picture i'd love to know what your heart was really mm -hmm. needing or questioning or mm -hmm. wondering mm -hmm. i would love to be a part of that conversation and help you realize mm -hmm. what maybe a, a deeper good. motive might have been i'm that's wondering good. if there's another way we could get that need met oh, that's good in a way that invests in you in the long run that's good versus that just being a, how could you do that? You're grounded yeah. or, oh, oh, that's the worst, you know, just shutting it down instead of yeah. there's an unmet need. Yeah. And now stewarding their heart by helping yeah, yeah, them yeah. be aware of yeah. the need. And then collectively as a family, how can we help you get that need met proactively? So you're not so right. vulnerable that's to good. trying to get it in this sideways way. Because that's we're your biggest fans. Yes. Because yeah. I favor you. <laughs> yeah, I favor you. And, uh, and and sometimes, you know, it does take a couple hours for the cortisol to wear off. And yep. that's important to be aware of, too. <laughs> yes, I agree. Uh, okay, well, we are going to be back and we're going to talk about relationships next. So thank you so much for being our guest. And again, people can go to the Good Enough Parenting. What is the actual link? It's goodenoughparent.online. One word, goodenoughparent.online. It's okay. free. Free totally resources. Free. I mm -hmm. love a good free resource. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Bill. And we will have you back for the next episode. Bye, everybody. Thank you.